Florence? Where's Florence and Major? Major, where are you? See, it's not that bad to play some worldly music. It's conveying what we want. Church folks don't want to tell to bring fun to life. So we we are going to find fun somewhere else. Shona, is that not is that not true? There you go. They think that being a church folk is carrying some heavy face like some ancient Jewish people to prove that you are godly. No fun, nothing. Not me. If you guys are going to a heaven that is so strict and legal, I'm not coming with you folks. I'm going to my own heaven. The heaven that belongs to my King Jesus is full of fun and happiness and full of luxury. That's what I'm interested in. I know that if yeah, I know that if Mary was was where she is by herself, she will get she got that thing shaking real good. You won't believe it. Talk, whoa, Victoria will let it loose all over the place. I love it. Victoria will let it loose all over the place. Just look at it, you'll be mesmerized. Or oh, Mary, Jesus Christ. What about Annie? When Annie let that thing out there. Or Ladri. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, you want to go and find husband for them quick. You're too good. Yeah. And you guys have all this package trying to pretend to be gospel women. I've asked God to forgive all of you so that you guys can have fun in life. <laughs> all right, let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Let's start reading. Where is our Vicky? Zelina, where are you? Uh, I think someone else should read because I'm about to leave any moment. Okay. Who want who want to pick up the reading? Exodus chapter three. Exodus chapter three. Yes. We are beginning from verse one. Verse one. Yeah. He start with now Moses kept. Uh, Moses. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. So Rehuel, Ruel is also called Jethro. Of Jethro, his father-in-law. That's where we want to begin. Florence, is that your voice? Or oh, is that Mary? Yes. Okay, Mary, keep on, my dear. And now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to even to Horeb. To Horeb, okay. To Horeb, okay. Go ahead. And the, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And okay. Moses said, Okay, now 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 go on, go on, go on, my dear, go on. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not bent. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the, of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw 
Nigeria. Okay, stop at that verse 5. Don't read anymore. I hope you guys are getting this. There are two ways that God invites people to recover their destiny and the assignment or to discover it or to reconstruct it, to reconfigure or recalibrate it. Or to change your destiny, give you a different assignment from what you already you were doing. Moses is at the mountain of God called Horeb. Let's see what is happening here because we always say the burning bush. But the real thing should be, just as we talk about Jacob's ladder. Now. Stay ways between earth and heaven. When I will do a thorough work on Jacob, you will really see that what you are doing or what you did before and stopped is going to be remembered. Every offering and burnt sacrifice is going to be remembered. Everything you did rightly but there was a mistake about how you went about it, it's remembered. God is going to turn it. He doesn't forget anything because his, his eye is following you. Whatever you are doing, see, God did not come to Moses when he was sitting at the well. God didn't come to him when he left Egypt and who knows how many days it took him or weeks for him to reach Midian. And don't tell me that he did not stop and cry. He did. I always have to look at human emotion and how they play a part here. There's, there's no normal person whom you've lost the best things of life that you will not cry. And God didn't come to Moses on his journey through the desert all by himself. God didn't show up then. At this time we are talking about, Moses was an elderly man. He was an elderly man. See how someone from a palace, from a palace where he had it all, and is now living in Midian, he also had it all because he was living with the king. Jethro was not just the priest of Midian. He was also possibly the ruler of Midian. He was a well-respected man, or we can actually say he was one of the lords of Midian. A man honored and respected and venerated. And he settled down to raise a family. And he settled down and joined in the business of his father-in-law. Here, God knew how disappointed Moses was with everything, including with God. We don't know whether Moses did pray his normal Hebrew prayer. We don't know. We don't know whether he settled and practiced the religion of his father-in-law. which we can adequately say his father-in-law was a worshiper of the Most High God. There are certain ways that when God see, when God see or he saw that many years have turned you bitter and you've settled for what is not really your career, not where your money is. You've settled to raise a family. 
you've settled to do the business of the family that you are married into. One day God is coming for you. Because God knows that you know all the magic. God knows that you know the practices of Egypt. They are not strange things to you. You've witnessed the burial of the dead. You've witnessed, you have witnessed how hell looked like. You've witnessed the practice of the occult of Egypt. How the power of Egypt betray other people. You've seen it all. Let me tell you. Everything you saw, everything you participated in, and you left behind, God is going to use what you know against your enemies. God is going to use your anger and turn it into a holy anger. He's going to use your passion. You love to be a leader. God will sneak in, even if you did it wrongly, he will sneak in to do something mighty about it. Or with it. God is going to use what you are doing now to prepare you for the future. If you can lead animals, then the possibility of your ability to lead humans is very big. Now, God used the work of the supernatural. God used super science. God used miracle to draw the attention of Moses. There is a place where God is going to use miracles to draw your attention. Most of the time, God uses miracle to show his love, to show how much he cares about you, how much he is working with you, how much he desires that all your problems be solved. So he will invest miracles signs and wonders into it. The workings of miracles, very, very important. It is one of the advertising tools. Please write this down. Miracles and signs and wonders are the advertising tools and the maintaining tools, the maintaining and sustaining tools of the kingdom of God. The workings of miracles, signs, and wonders are the advertising and the sustenance and maintaining tools. Tools is T-O-O-L-S. T like Tom, O like orange, O like orange, L like lion, S like Sam. The advertising, the maintenance and sustaining tools of the kingdom of heaven among us humans. Make sure you put it like that. Among us humans. Annie, I hope you're writing. So miracles are not just for the advertising of the existence of God or the powers of God or the love of God or the presence of God. They are also used to maintain and to sustain the kingdom of heaven among us humans. They don't need it in heaven. I hope you know that. They don't need it in heaven. They need it only on the earth. 
God knew that because this man has seen enough magic in Egypt, he's seen enough politics, and he sees what it means for Egyptians to love power and to be brutal. He's seen it all. God decided that this man is going to carry a higher form of power, a higher form of the energy of life, not the energy of death. Please write this down. Magic is the energy of death, while miracles Miracles is the electricity and the super energy of the living God. Magic leads to the worship of fallen angels and deadly demons. All demons are deadly. Magic is the worship and glorification. Make sure you put glorification. Magic is the worship and glorification to glorify fallen angels and deadly demons. While miracles are primarily for the functioning and worship of the Almighty God. You have to know the difference. The occult, keep writing, the occult is the presence practice and experience of fallen angels and demons while Miracles is the experience and practice of the life and lifestyle of the living God. See, now we are entering into the real thing. You thought you saw something between David and Goliath. You are going to see how God deals with magic, astrology, the occult, and the forces of darkness that were behind the throne. Every leader of a nation is laid by magic and the occult or laid by miracles and the living God. Either those who advise your leaders are people that belongs to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or they belongs to the devil, even in the name of the living God. Make sure you write all these things down. Because people can practice the religion of faith, the religion of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the religion of Jesus, while behind the scene, they are worshippers of Lucifer, the fallen light bearer, the bent out priest. That's what we call him. You guys don't know the hidden names of Satan. We call him the bent out priests. 
the burnt out leader. He burned himself out. Now let's go. God knew that if he's going to send Moses back to Egypt to deliver the people who are now crying, for the first time they turned to God, the train of Israel, when that bad Pharaoh died, who knows how many of them came and go? Because we are talking of so many years, hundreds of years. But when one of the pharaohs died, the children of Israel could not take it no more. They started to cry out to God. They want their freedom. They want to get back to their land. They want to worship the God of their fathers. They want to run their own economy, run their own families. They want the God of their fathers to be at the center of their lives once more. Egypt is not where they belong. They now have found out a hard way. They are, they, are, they are praying in Egypt, but the solution was not in Egypt. I hope you guys are getting how this thing is. Read the last verses of Genesis chapter 2. The last verses. You will see they were praying in Egypt for God to deliver them. And God heard them. He heard their groanings and their prayers. But the solution to that prayer was not in Egypt. Hallelujah. The prayer that they were praying in Egypt for deliverance was being answered at Horeb. It was being answered in Median. So for those of you who think the solution to your problems is in your church, be careful. It's with people that you know. Be careful. They were praying in Egypt. But the answer to their prayers was not in Egypt. Many a times the answer to your prayer is going to be a human being. A one time thing. Sometimes someone that is connected to lead you. The prayer is going on in Egypt. And God came to find the solution. At Mount Horeb. In Midian. In the land of Midian. Among. One of them. That is not really one of them. Please get it. Joseph was one of them. But he was not really one of them. He was an Egyptian also. Moses is one of them. But he's also an Egyptian. They were all Hebrews. But Moses was not just a Hebrew. He was also an Egyptian. So let me tell you what this is all about. God is looking for people who have an open mind. Who knows the, the people that God uses for bigger things, whom he invests with bigger powers and wealth, are people who are between many worlds, many planets. They come from many sides to be who they are. Like myself, I be an Igbo name. But I am an Efok or the Bibio culture person. And I speak and write 
those three languages very friendly. So you cannot make, if I am in the country I was born, you cannot make out which culture I'm from. You cannot. <laughs> you can't. And I will go as far as speaking some languages that except you were born there and grow up there as a child, you can never speak. And Moses was like that. Look carefully. Some of the mighty men and women of the Bible were like that. There were people who crossed culture. Who crossed from their culture to other cultures. And knew those cultures very well. Their food, their clothing, their language, they speak, they write them. They love those other cultures. Those are the people that God is coming for first. In some instances, not in all instances. In some. See, Joseph is two cultures. Two personalities. Moses is two cultures. And now three. Hebrew, Egyptian, Midianites. And people like that must be invested with miraculous power. Why? Because they could become people who in their future you are going to face Severe competition from the forces of wicked cosmic powers. Because you know. So, you can see here how God appears to you will determine how your journey is going to be. It will also determine what your assignment is connected with. You see, with Joseph, it was a dream. And the ability to decode or to interpret a dream. Daniel, the same thing. Visions, trances, dreams. For Moses, it wasn't a dream. It was a physical miracle. You know, I've told you that fire is not really fire. Real physical fire that bent and destroy, water and wind that can do destruction for the forces of the living God, they are not that. Fire for protection, for decoration, for the working of miracles. For the beginning of a new thing. Wherever you see fire mentioned, something is about to die, to be bent down, and something is about to rise up. Look at Pentecost was the beginning of the church. Fire on a bush. And the bush was not burning. And who was the fire? An angel. An angel descended. The appearance of that angel became fire. Fire came upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost and they were not bent. And entered into them. Mary, read about how that angel appeared. Read it again, please, my dear. Okay, um, verse 2, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Okay, stop there. Stop there. Stop there. The angel appeared in a flame of fire. So sometimes in the day and the night, 
you see something like a flame of fire going through the sky, sometimes it's an angel on the, on the go. I hope you know that. Sometimes you see stars shooting and coming very fast towards you, it's an angel. Until they touch down before your presence, then you know that, oh, it's like you see an airplane far away. It looks very little, like a tiny spot. The more it becomes visible, the more it starts to come down, then you know that's an airplane. The same thing with angels. Exactly the same way. There are angels who fly like fire. They carry flames of fire. They are spirit, but they also carry flames of fire. We, God's servants, we are seen in the supernatural realm and in the physical realm, we are seen as flames of fire. Listen to what he said. Who made his angels winds and his servants flames of fire? That's how people in the other kingdom sees us. And these angels came in a flame of fire as a messenger of Yahweh Amen. to tell him number one let's see what this means you are going to need you are going to need Junior, how are you? Yeah, are you participating in the in the uh, supernatural warfare? Okay, it's on. You've seen the the broadcast is on. All right. I am on a broker. Did you get your package? Okay. I'm going to contact uh, contact um, the UPS store to, and let them look at the tracking number and let's, let's see what's going on. So I am in the studio. I am broadcasting to the whole world. I will call you when I'm done on WhatsApp, okay? Let me turn it up. Some people don't know what what we are doing is all about. What we are doing in supernatural warfare. So we have to break it down to everybody. Who appears to you is going to determine how the battle is going to be. An angel appeared in a flame of fire and as a flame of fire. And the bush was on fire. He saw fire on the bush. That's what he was seeing. But that part of the bush that he saw fire on, it was actually an angel of the Lord standing there. Wow. The angel of the Lord was standing there, and that angel of the Lord came. And let's, let's say that from his waist down was flames of fire shooting out everywhere. And then from his waist up, you can now make out and see at his back, you can see the wings, you can now see his pretty face, and you can see the, the dazzling bling blings all around him. Because angels always, many of them wear blings. They glitter. They wear gold, they wear diamond, they wear gemstones that we don't even know about. And all the shining and bling bling all over him. That's why when you find some good bling bling for my hands, for my neck, get them for me. 
I want to look good for him because that is God is addicted to bling bling. If you didn't know it, know it. God is addicted to bling 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 bling. That's why some of the bodies or some angels are gold, some are bronze, some are diamond, some are different. Their physical body are made of those things. So why should I not wear them and look good for him? Mary, read that verse too again. We want to get it right. And the angel of the Lord appears to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. In a flame of fire. He came with fire. The angel came. Fire was part of the covering of this angel. I want you to begin to see how angels look like. Some of them. He came. Fire is part of his covering, of his makeup. These are what we call angels of fire. Uh, our time is, is up. So we up okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Have you asked God? For the kind of angel that you really need, not just any kind. There are angels of fire. Please write it down. You're looking at the different kinds of angels too. There are angels who are killers. So depending on what you are doing in your place of supernatural warfare, what you are praying about will determine the kind of angel that will be sent. What Moses is about to embark based on the prayer that is going on in Egypt for deliverance is going to determine the kind of angel that will be sent to do the job. And by the time we finish this Exodus story, you will see that at the end, a killer angels, killer angels began to appear. Destructive angels began to, angels that will come and destroy a whole city, a whole nation, lay it west. Yeah, there are angels whose job is to destroy nations. Yep. There are angels whose job is to set cities and places on fire and burn them down. And they don't have no matches. The fire comes. The flames shoot out of themselves. Wow. What revelation. Yeah. So you don't need... That's why David said to Goliath, you come to me with shield and with spears and with javelin and all of that. I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of hosts. Why? Because David knew this. There are killer angels. Let me tell you, demons and Lucifer do not stand a chance in any warfare ever. There are angels who's, who who carries who carries flames of who carries let, let, let me put it this way they carry volcanic eruption of fire more than volcanic eruption if Jesus carries daylight in himself he carried sunshine in himself remember that there are some planets that has more than one moon more than one sun plenty of them how much more the, the person who put them up there, whose name is Jesus, how much, how much sun, 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 and how much moon do you think he carries in his body? Think about that. Until it is said that the planet heaven, not country of heaven, the planet itself doesn't have no sun, no sun to give light to the planet. Because out of the body of Jesus, the Son of God, the daylight, the sunshine constantly shoot out of him. 
So wherever Jesus is, daytime arrive, sunshine arrive. This is the same Jesus that was born in a manger we are talking about here. This is the same Jesus that was hung on a tree and died and resurrected that we are talking about. That should change your opinion about him, how you see him, how you perceive him, and how you worship him. The most destructive person in heaven and on earth is Jesus the king. Did you know it? The most destructive person. When you see Jesus, okay, let's not even go to Jesus. Let's talk about how, how, how do you think any Lucifer or any fallen angel will survive with angels from heaven that are volcanic eruption of their own? This guy is not appearing to Moses just as an angel, quiet angels. No, there is real war riches that you don't need quiet angels. This angel is also, listen to this, for some of you who make mistakes, some preachers make mistakes and say, oh, only Michael and his warriors are the ones that come to fight. It's a lie. Now, lie. There are angels that are combination of the messenger type, which every angel is a messenger, by the way. But also, there are angels that come from the department of Gabriel who are combination of that department and combination of war at the same time. They are combination. Moses is a combination of compassion and anger, divine anger. You see it? So do you think God is going to send him as just a compassionate angel? What about when his anger, when he carries divine wrath, divine judgment? What's going to happen? The angel will be looking and say, I was not called for this. To hell with you, Moses. So they are also giving him a combination. And that's why when they were leaving Egypt, God warned the children of Israel, I am sending a killer angel ahead of you. Do not disobey him. If you disobey him, he will kill each of you. And that angel spent his time and killed all of them in the wilderness who rebelled against the word of God and of Moses. You think they only died through old age? Uh, and they say, they, that angel makes sure that he took them on a roller coaster round and round and round at the same spot until they all died. <laughs> <laughs> the story of the Exodus is full of angels of fire and angels with their hand swift to kill. It's also full of what we call angels of judgment. I hope you are writing this down. Angels of fire. An angels that kills. And angels of judgment. There are angels that are called angels of judgment. They bring divine judgment on a city, individuals, families, Nations, race, continents, they do it. And they will that those kind of angels will require a human being to be the one that will tell them what to do. The reason why you are called to pray is so that you will tell angels what to do. I want you to see how much God respects you, how much God honors you, that the kinds of angels who will come to earth will also depend on when the warrior play, pray, when the prayer warriors, the warrior sons of God on the earth, who are obedient and totally yielded to the Lord, 
not yielded to politicians or to greedy businessmen and women. Those who are fully yielded to the Lord, your prayer is going to bring particular types of angels to world history. The reason why our earth is the way it is today is that sons of God are not praying. And if they are praying, they are praying the wrong kind of prayer. They are praying one prayer here and what they are doing and their mind is completely different outside the place of prayer. And so their prayers are not being answered. Now we are entering into some deep things and some manifestations. There are going to be some major manifestations today. Beginning from today, I don't know what, is it 10 or 11? There's going to begin to be major manifestations in people's life and their lifestyles and their money. So, as this program goes on, and a new job calls, you go to the new job. I'm ready. When the bank calls you, go to the bank. Hallelujah. When a real estate agent comes knocking on your door for you to go and get the new house, please go. You don't need to worry. You don't, yeah, you don't need to worry that you are. If the rich husband or the rich wife come calling, just leave the program and go and get it settled and over with. <laughs> yeah. If you are needed to travel back to the country that you come from to go and get land and get and get houses, please go. I'm going to stop here and then I would like you to take a break for five or ten minutes. Take a break for five or ten minutes. Go and grab something to drink and we will come and we will continue from verse number two of Exodus chapter three.